So when working in the lab, you must wear full PPE, and that must be a lab coat and latex gloves. Each lab practical will have a risk assessment and COSH paperwork, which includes the chemicals in use. All this paperwork is found online and if you ever have any doubts, the lab practicals are supervised by members of lecturing staff and you must ask questions if you ever have any doubts or any questions you may need answering. Welcome to today's tutorial. What we're going to be going through today is how to carry out forensic examination notes. So when you walk into the lab, it can be quite daunting that you will get like an examination form here with pretty much it all being blank. So you have a general examination record and then you have these extra supplement sheets called continuation sheets. And when you walk in, uh, it's really important that you clean your desk down with any cleaning products, including like uh, tissue, uh, a forensic cleaning solution called T-Pol and you spray it and you basically wipe down your desk because we will be carrying out DNA work in here so we have to keep our desk very sterile uh, and clean. We place like some either some white bench coat like this or some brown examination pa uh, paper. Uh, you want to set your uh, desk out so you have a very clean sterile area to work. The next step is you get your examination paperwork and at the top, it has this section here, which kind of wants to, uh, exhibit reference details, police reference details, and you have to critique the forensic packaging. So in the first year, you're probably used to actually packaging items uh, in your CSI uh, modules. And it's when the forensic scientist receives them at the lab, we will critique that packaging because there's no point us uh, continuing uh, the forensic procedures if the packaging has been compromised. So for example here we have a, a forensic examination package here and as you can see most of the fields where uh, this writing on is incomplete so we can't really uh, continue with our examinations because the paperwork doesn't match up with the exhibits. We have an exhibit here which is kind of like an obvious mistake, but the seal has been compromised. The sellotape, you can even see some exhibits uh, material protruding through. So we, we definitely cannot continue with this one. And then you might get one uh, which is really good packaging. It's very sealed around the edges. You've got your sign seal fix. Uh, and all the fields have been completed. When a police officer sends some forensic work into the lab, they have to complete a paperwork called an MG21. This tells you who the officer is, a little bit about the case, like the circumstances, and it also gives you what should be on the exhibit packaging, which is, is usually the last page. You have to check this paperwork matches the actual exhibits, and it's really important. And if anything differs, this should be documented in your examination notes here. Once you have completed the fields and you'll have to uh, transcribe what's on the paperwork and the exhibit bags onto your examination notes, you are then ready to enter the packaging. So the step, first step is once we've got the exhibit and you're happy that it's in, the integrity is intact, you can open the exhibit. And how you do that, you never open on a CSI or police officer's seal because you want to have that intact. So if it goes to court and it was ever uh, under any scrutiny, you can show them in court that that seal is, is intact. So you want to kind of, uh, I usually pick the side. So using uh, scissors, push the exhibit to one side, so it moves to one side. And then using scissors, very carefully, obviously sharp scissors, make sure that you're cutting away from yourself. And with a gloved latex hand, recover your item and place it down onto your examination paper. 
you're finished at this point. It's always good practice to have a look to see if anything's fallen out during the transportation. You know, it could be a wallet, it could be, you know, money, it could be whatever. Uh, in this case, there's nothing there. And just place that to one side. So you always want to kind of keep an eye and keep a clean workstation as you're doing forensic examinations. And uh, with your gloved hand, you want to, uh, you know, this shirt is it's quite big, uh, but you want to uh, open it out to reveal. You don't want to kind of uh, hold it open, definitely don't over, hold it up uh, away from your desk because forensic evidence could be falling off your exhibit as you do it. So you want to do it over your examination paper. So if something does fall out, for example, a hair, a fibres, it's being collected onto your examination desk. So the first step is uh, you have to describe your item. So the first heading, and I've al I always have put this on your examination for you to keep to to help you is to describe what you've got. So in forensic science, you could pretty much get anything as a forensic exhibit. Uh, and it's kind of like a bit of an art form of describing an item. So in this case, it is a long sleeve shirt. You want to put any labels, uh, which is usually found in, inside the collar, logos, sizes. Uh, um, if he hasn't got a size, please use a scale to measure uh, the colour. Sometimes the smell, sometimes you'll, you might get smell like petrol, for example. You might be able to say like petrol-like aroma, uh, perfume, aftershave, because these could be very important during our examination. Uh, you can even count the buttons. Um, really give it a good description. Um, spend some time looking at it, looking for, for, for anything which will distinguish it. Because you never know, it might be used for CCTV uh, inquiries. The next step is you have a title called condition. And condition is describing how you've received this item. Is it, uh, is it in a poor condition? Has it got holes, any signs of damage, any wear and tear? Does it look new? Does it have le like new tags, new logos? Uh, these are very important as well. And then the next stage is a examination title. And if you keep to this structure on how to, uh, how to examine an item, you will be able to examine anything in forensic science, be it a long sleeve shirt, a, a firearm, a knife, uh, absolutely anything. Uh, and as long as you keep to this structure, you'll be fine. And at least you'll be populating these forms uh, and documenting very important information. So the examination, uh, on your MG21, the police officer would tell you really what they want carrying out. So they might say, I want to know DNAs on the item, any blood, any semen, any saliva. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be really kind of uh, obvious from the paperwork. Uh, and your examination is telling the kind of reader what you have done with this exhibit. So have you tape lifted four fibres? Have you used the KM kit, the Castle Meyer blood testing kit? Uh, and these are all documented in other tutorial videos. Uh, once you have completed that section, you may have uh, found something of uh, like interest. So for example, in this case, we have this red brown staining we could have tested it with KM, the Castle Meyer test, which is a positive, if it's positive or negative. And you may have swabbed it for DNA evidence, and this is now your exhibit. And you have to document that in your note taking of like you have taken one or two or three exhibits from this item. Just like you do with CSI duties, that if you are at a crime scene, think of this shirt as a mini crime scene, and you are exactly the same process as a crime scene. You are updating your notes, telling me where, exactly what location, size, was it positive or negative, 
so in a year's time, if you're ever in Crown Court giving evidence, these notes are really useful to you and enabled to actually tell the court exactly what did it look like on the day, what did you test, why did you test it, and what are the exhibit details. To assist your note taking, you may find it uh, very useful to draw the item. And again, it's very useful to use the continuation form. And because it's a nice kind of large A4 piece of paper, you're able to draw the item. So it might be a knife. Uh, please use the full like size. Don't do little small diagrams because if you do start finding evidence on these items, uh, larger the better. So you'd be able to draw, like put arrows on. Uh, if it's a small fiber on the teeth of the knife, you'd be able to kind of uh, draw that and it'd be, it's not all like squ squashed up. Um, and color coding for forensic scientists is red for blood. So if you do find KM positive stains, uh, how to use Castlemire is in a previous tutorial video. Uh, red for blood, blue for saliva, and it's purple for um, the actual uh, semen stains, uh, for AP positive stains. And that's because that's the colour of the, color of the reactions you obtain from the presumptive tests. Uh, and it's like an etiquette in forensic science that no matter what lab you're working in, uh, be it in a new clan, a uh, police force or a private forensic provider, everybody kind of use these notes uh, structure, diagrams, and colour coding system. Uh, so when it gets to court uh, and people look at your examination notes, uh, it's kind of like a standard format. Thank you for listening to the tutorials today. If you've got any questions about any technical detail or you'd like to speak to us, uh, please contact the module leader, myself, Paul Langton, either on email or Teams, or just pop in, knock on the door and come and see me.